Now, wait a minute, give me, I want to defend myself. Look, I'm not against any of this stuff, okay? I'm really not. I don't care about it. I'm glad they can build streetcars. I'm in favor of them. What I'm against is cutting the existing they services. They did not cut any of the existing all, services of the streetcar. That's total bullshit. That's not bullshit. The money came out of the city. The operating budget came out of what? Trimet. a bus line. And it was They didn't cut any bus six it's still running. There's a duplication of bus six. The, the streetcar here is a duplication of bus six. Well, it is not a duplication Look, that, that operating capital for that streetcar that's coming out of the TriMet General Fund could be used for other services. It, it should come out. That, the city should pay for that. Period. It is paying for that. No, they're not. A lot of the operating funds come from, from Prime out of their general fund. Right, because Prime the, the union forced the city to use union labor. Is that true? Yes. Is that true? The city didn't want to use union labor. They wanted to use the whole union labor room. And people who wanted to drive the street. Is that true? Which would have cut the cost by like 40%. You know, I don't have any evidence. He's trying to say that it was the union that forced the city to use TriMet workers, but I don't remember any anything like that. This was an interagency agreement that all the parties agreed to at the time, and considering that TriMet had already a seniority and a, an apprentice program, it made sense to integrate it. Now, of course, Adron is anti-union and says everybody gets too much. Those streetcar operators get too much. We should pay them 40% less is what he's saying. And, you know, that's his point of view. But this was all done cooperatively. Nobody was shoving anything down anybody's throat. And remember, in order for the streetcar to get TriMet to pay out of TriMet funds, this is, a, this is what they got. Otherwise, this, the city would have had to pay everything itself. And I don't think they could operate it without TriMet. So he's, he's wrong. Is that actually true? But they can't maintain, you know, they, they need TriMet maintenance department. That's why the thing... It's a, it's a money... Money bleeder, it bleeds money, they can't even support the damn thing. It's corrupt, you read the article recently. It's the auditor, the Portland auditor said the streetcar is violating state law in the way. It's a, it's a, it's a goddamn thing like a goldsmith. They, they got set up with a non-profit using city funds, co-mingling all these I'm telling you what the, the article said. What the article, the auditor said that it was... You're not paying attention to all of it. You picked like two three... The article said the auditor said the streetcars in violation of state law. They did. That's one line. That, but that's the most important. Yeah, but that's the most important line. Yes, it is. It's, it's not even following established procedures. What about the mission statement? You should pick on that too. The mission statement. The, the, the streetcar mission statement. What is it? To develop. Yeah, well, no, there isn't one. Order. That's the point. I'm just saying, you pick one oh. line, you can pay attention to the rest of the article. No, I didn't read it, but the main point was it's in violation of state law. So, not that it matters. It's in violation of federal law, and Bundy is in violation of federal law. And that's the whole fuss you're talking about. And I am. I see writing. Look, you're not gonna, I'm not going to support these stupid ass piece of shit streetcars. They're junk. They break down. I listen. I listen to the fucking scanner all day. They, they break down every now every hour. There's a breakdown. Constantly stuck in traffic jam. They're a joke. It's a joke. I'm not sure what the obsession is with the whole thing. It's a joke, except it's brought about ten million dollars to the city to build out the city. So why is that? Why does it bring? Why does it, What is it about the streetcar that makes people want to build next to it? What? Not the sight the city wants to see. During the Friday evening commute, a near empty streetcar on the east side. Um, when you get off, um, there's not usually as many people at the streetcar. A lot of people like taking the max. And the few passengers on board take notice. I think the lack of ridership is because it's, it's not like the max, it doesn't go anywhere.
Revenue-wise, the streetcar isn't cutting it either. A consultant projected a million-dollar revenue stream after fare boxes were installed. But at this point, the city has collected only about half of that. The city insists only about 7% of streetcar passengers try to beat the system by not paying. But the folks we spoke with argue that number is much higher. Kids around our age, you know, tend to kind of sneak on every once in a while. And no wonder, streetcar fare inspectors rarely, if at all, issue citations for not paying. Only about 6% of the streetcar's $8.9 million annual operating budget comes from fares. The mayor's office tells us the rest comes from general transportation revenue. Because it makes it more work. Why? 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 It decreases the traffic. It does not. It gets stuck in traffic jams. This is a fact. You can go look at the study. There's a reason. Amsterdam's not America. Don't compare Europe to America. No, this is no. Yeah. It's like trying to say Asia, Bangladesh is like here. No, Europe has a whole different lifestyle. You can ignore evidence. I'm not ignoring anything. I've been to Amsterdam. You just gonna ignore it. I'm not. What about Vancouver, BC? That's basically, you know, Denver people are speaking English. Yeah. Very similar. What about it? They do the same thing. Yeah, and they do traffic calming exercises. They slow down the traffic. Yeah, probably. So. What? What? I missed that. Way, <laughs> would you sit on this street right here, right there on that sidewalk, at a seat, if the weather was warm, would you sit out there, if traffic was going by right there where those parked cars are at 30 miles an hour? No. Barely anybody ever does that. What's that have to do with Nobody the streetcar? Nobody wants to. The streetcar is used to encourage people to not go hauling ass through a residential area, and that's what the Pearl District is now, is a residential area. The streetcar is used to stop traffic? Commercial. No, it's called traffic calming. And they put it. If you're going to complain about this shit, you should at least learn about it. Adron's trying to tell me that one of the purposes of the uh, streetcar was traffic calming. Now, I've never heard any material. I've never read any material, heard any material where that was part of the agenda. And um, let me read. Let me read to you from the uh, Portland Bureau of Transportation where they talk about uh, traffic calming. Uh, in the past, the effect of the automobile travel on residential streets was not considered a critical factor in the overall quality of life in a residential area. Transportation planners and engineers were not necessarily responsible for considering how roadway traffic volume and travel speed would affect the perceived quality of life. More recently, these measures have become important. Traffic engineers and transportation planners have become responsible for responding to neighborhood concerns over traffic volumes and speeds. One of the most effective ways to reduce volumes and speed is to install traffic calming devices. These devices can include traffic circles, traffic diverters, median islands, curb extension, and speed bump. Okay, there's nothing in there about the streetcar being installed for traffic calming. So here, here we have an example where Adron took some material that he knows about and, and incorporated it into his argument, and he does this all the time okay he'll he'll get he has a lot of information up there in that mind of his and he'll he'll pick it from wherever he wants in order to make a point even though it's not actually true in the case that we're talking about here which is the streetcar Traffic calming is any change we make to a street so that motors drive in a more civil fashion. What that does is it signals to the to drivers that they need to slow down, be aware that they aren't dominant in a certain environment. And traffic calming is infrastructure to make sure that happens. Is the infrastructure going to serve the pedestrian as well as the automobile? Or is our pedestrian infrastructure going to continue to be shaved down? so that more vehicles can move as fast as they want. Adding bike lanes. Anytime we take some of the physical width out of the street, we're really doing traffic calming. In New York City, they've recently released studies to show that streets that have bike lanes on them reduced killed or significantly injured uh, crashes between vehicles and, and pedestrians by up to 40 percent. Traffic calming actually had its origins in the United States in Berkeley. Or Donald Appleyard, the original researcher that did most of his work in Europe, brought traffic calming to the United States. We have many, many circles, a number of curve extensions, chicanes, the through streets, and a whole 
other goggle of, of different treatments have been tried and worked uh, very well in Berkeley. Yeah, it does stop it sometimes. And you know that. Well, the traffic right stops. The streetcar gets caught every day. Multiple, yeah. 10, 12, 20 times a day in the traffic jam. The point is, whether you love it or not, it's done exactly what it's supposed to do, which is bring tons of attention and tons of development and tons of money into the city of Portland. Period. In that regard, it's been totally successful. You can play you agree with him? The other fact is, it's got 12,000 plus people riding in a day. That yeah, for a buck. It was, they yeah. ran the thing for five years free. That wouldn't be riding a bus. And if they ran a respected bus. Bullshit. Service, if the bus was a buck, they'd be riding the damn bus. If the bus. If, look, the thing's a buck, man. It was free, too. Yeah, it was so. free for five years. And why was it free for five years? Anyway, why was it free? Because they wanted to sell the fucking condos, yeah, that's why. Go ahead, talk. I was making all the decisions myself. Yeah. I make them different, but I also don't think that they're like the most horrible things that have been done on the No, of, of course not. I mean, you know, <laughs> no, no, it's, it's basically moot, I know. It's, it, it's irrelevant other than the... I'd rather we spend the money on the than like, you know, things that are more... more on a highway? Widening highways. Yeah. Well, it would be nice if they could keep the... Look, that's another point. Is that until you can get the traffic to move and stop the traffic, you know what's killing us is, is those cars sitting, sitting in traffic, stuck. And this is, That's what this kills us. They've got to get that traffic moving. I had a kind of shitty commute. Normally my commute up from when I get across the Hawthorne Bridge to downtown is pretty easy, you know. But today I was stuck behind a lot of cars, and the whole town was thinking, I hate all these fucking giant steel, stinky, noisy <laughs> things. I had this woman who cut me off in her Yukon <laughs> XL. <laughs> Why are you in this gigantic <laughs> thing? You're one little woman in this car. You're driving, you know, probably three miles in this thing. It uh -huh. weighs 4,000 pounds. <laughs> are you picking up lumber on the way home? Like, why do you have this car? <laughs> why are you driving this car? Status symbol.